I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to calculate the least common multiple. Least common multiple. The least common multiple is the first multiple that any two or more numbers have in common. Two possible ways to solve for least common multiple are by listing the multiples, also by using prime factorization. Here's example number one. We have seven and five. I'll show you how to solve for least common multiple by using the method of listing your multiples first. You want to list your multiples of your first number, which in this case is seven. And if you remember, listing multiples is just a matter of listing the first number or itself and adding that number itself to itself. So 7 plus 7 gives me 14. So then you write down the 14. Then you take the number you get, the 14, and you add it to the original number again, which is 7. So 14 plus 7 is 21. Then you add another 7, you get 28, 35. And if you remember, multiples go on forever. So eventually you're just going to have to say, I'm going to stop. Because you could literally sit here all day and keep writing multiples, okay? Then you need to list some multiples of your second number. Second number is 5. So we're starting with 5. We add that to itself when we get 10, then 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. If you remember from the first slide, I explained that the least common multiple just means the smallest number that the two numbers have in common. Really, least common multiple explains what it is with its own name. It's the multiple that the two numbers have in common that is the least in value. Okay? So, I'm going to look at these two numbers and figure out what's the first number that the two numbers have in common or the two rows of multiples have in common. And that would be 35. The 35 is here in the 7 and the 35 is here in the 5. Let's move on to another example so I can show you how to find the least common multiple by listing the multiples again. Example number two, we have nine and 27. Here's my first few multiples of the number nine and my first multiple of 27. Why did I only list one multiple this time? Because I didn't have to go on. 27 was the first number that the two numbers had in common. So there's really no point in me going on. So 27 is the least common multiple between 9 and 27. I usually circle my answer and I used to call this a peanut with my students because after you circle your answers when you're listing your multiples, it usually looks like a peanut, the shape that you have to circle in because they're usually not lined up so it just ends up kind of looking like that. And I'm talking about a peanut that's still in the show. Anyway, the answer to example number two is 27. Let's move on to example number three. Example number three, we need to find the least common multiple for three and 11. The first few multiples of three are three, six, nine, 12, 15, and 18. The first few multiples of 11 are 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, and 66. Okay, we have a problem here. The problem is they have no numbers in common. Does that mean that there is no least common multiple between these two numbers? Definitely not. There will always, always, always be a least common multiple between any set of numbers. So the issue here is the fact that we have not listed enough multiples on one of our lines or maybe both of our lines. So this is what I'm gonna do. I see that the multiples of 3 stop at 18 and my multiples of 11 I'm all the way up at 66 so maybe I need to write more multiples of 3 out and eventually I may fall along one of these lines so let's see what happens. When I list more multiples of 3 um, I go to 21, 24, 27, 30 and 33 and yes there we have our common multiple it's 33. Again, draw my peanut. 
I did not have to list these multiples underneath. They could have continued out this way. I just listed them underneath so that you understood that these were extras that I ended up having to add because we didn't have enough originally. So if you were to continue your multiples here, that would be totally fine. The answer to example number three is 33. Example number four. This time we have three numbers that we want to find the least common multiple for. It does not matter how many numbers you have in your original set or how many numbers the problem is asking you for, your example in your book or wherever you're working from. There's always, always, always a least common multiple. But how about we try solving using prime factorization this time? So this is going to be a different setup. Before we solved by listing our multiples. This time we're going to use prime factorization. If you're not so familiar with prime factorization, you probably want to check out my prime factorization video. I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail of how to find the prime factorization because that's really a whole topic in itself. On this video, I'm assuming you know how to do that already. So if we find the prime factors of these numbers, 9 would end up being 3 times 3, 36 would be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, 60 would be 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. To have a little more space, I'm going to move this line of the numbers and their prime factors up to my next page. So here I have it. And what I'm going to do now is list all of my numbers, the 9, the 36, and the 60, and write out to the right of them, write their prime factors. So the prime factors are stacked directly on top of each other. So I have 9 and its prime factorization, 36, its prime factorization, and 60 and its prime factorization. Now, after doing this step, when you're finding the least common multiple of a number, it is important that you pull out any number that you see within this group. You're not going to look with, at your original numbers. You're only going to look at your new numbers, um, which are really the old numbers in their prime factorization form. Now, every single number that is within this area, you need to pull it out. So if I look around, I can see that I have a 2. We have several 2's, but you only need to write one down right now. We also have 3, so you write one down. And we also have a 5, so we write it down. Then you need to write down the most number of times that each of these numbers is represented in this original grouping. Let me show you what that means. I have a 2 here. I need to look at every number and see how many times 2 is represented the most number of times. Okay? If I look at the 9, there is no 2. If I look at the 36, there are two 2's. So right now the most number of 2's that we know of in any of the numbers is 2 times. And then 60, I also have two 2's. So that means I need to pull out those two 2's and write them down and put a multiplication sign in between. Now I'm going to do the same for the 3. Okay, for the 9 I have two 3's. So at the least we're going to have two 3's written down. But if either of these other numbers has more than two 3's listed, then we'll bump our number up from there. The 36 has two 3's. The 60 has only one 3. So 2 was the most. So we'll write two 3's down and again multiplication signs in between. The most number of times a 5 was written down was only 1. So you only write one 5 down. Then you multiply all these numbers out and you get, for this example, 180. So solving the least common multiple is a series of steps when you're solving using prime factorization. You start by listing the prime factorization of your numbers. I like to stack them on top of each other because it makes it a little easier for me to see what I'm working with. I pull out all of the numbers that are represented, make sure I have the number represented the most number of times that it is shown in any of the numbers, multiply those times out between each other, and you get your answer. Let's do another example like this. Example number 5. We have 24, 36, 48. Again, we're going to solve using prime factorization. So after finding your prime factorization, you'll end with your numbers being broken down like this. And again, I'm going to move these numbers up to the top of my next page. Now I'm going to stack the numbers directly on top of each other. So 
my 24, my prime factorization comes out to my right, 36 the same, 48 the same. Pull out every number that you see represented. This time, although there are several numbers, there are only two separate numbers that are listed. They are 2 and 3. Now, I just need to pull out the most number of times each of those numbers is represented. In the 24, the 2 is represented 3 times. In the 36, the 2 is represented 2 times. In the 48, it's represented 4 times. 4 is our most number of times that 2 was represented, so it's the amount of times that it needs to be represented in our final multiplication to find our answer. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 twos. How many times are we going to have to list 3? Let's see, the 24 has 1, 3, the 36 has 2, 3's, and the 48 has 1, 3. The 36 had 2, 3, so that was the most number of times the 3 was ever listed, so that's how many times you need to use it. Now we have something that looks like 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 to multiply together to get our answer. And we have an answer of 144. So I do want to remind you of one last thing, and that is, it's your choice whether you want to list the multiples or use prime factorization to find the least common multiple of any numbers. Solving either way will get you the exact same answer. I prefer to use prime factorization when I have larger numbers or I have more than two numbers that I want to find the least common multiple for, but there's no right or wrong way to get a correct answer. Thanks for watching. That's the end of this video.